Hello students today we will discuss a famous story the open window why H H Munro who is popularly known as Saki Hector Hughes Munro he was born in 18 December in 1870 and died on 14 November 1960 wrote under the pen name of Saki he was a british writer whose witty mischievous short stories are famous even now he is considered by english teachers and scholars as a master of the short story his father who was a police officer in burma sent him to england where he was brought up by his aunt munro became a newspaper correspondent and journalist however as a short story writer munro is remembered during Remember during World War First he enlisted in the army and was killed in action Munro is known for his cleverly constructed short stories he also wrote two novels the unbearable bessington and when william came the open window by h h munro is a very well constructed short story with a tricky ending and appears to be a ghost story which it is not It is in fact a satire on the popular belief in ghosts and spirits. The central characters are 15 years old girl Vera and the caller Mr. Frenton. The visitor was a total stranger. Vera planned to frighten him away and told that they were expecting the shooting party to return home although they had been missing for 3 years. Even their bodies were not found they were drowned in a bog. analysis of the story uh, now we will analyze the story the open window brilliantly portrays how one's nerves affect his or her personality humphrey house says in one of his critical analysis on the literary works of h h munro he dramatizes the conflict between reality and imagination demonstrating how difficult it can be to distinguish between them The Open Window is a Saki most popular short story. It was first collected in Beast and Super Beast in 1914. Saki's wit is at the height of its power in the story of a spontaneous practical joke played upon a visiting stranger. The practical joke re- recurs in many of Saki's story, but The Open Window is perhaps his most successful and best known example of the type. The open window shows us just how fine the line can be between sanity and insanity. Not only does the unfortunate Mr. Nuttall falls victim to the story joke, but so does the reader. The reader uh, the reader is at first inclined to laugh at Nuttall for being so gullible, is he to be befooled? However, the reader too has been taken in by Saki's story and must come to the realization that he or she is also inclined to believe uh, believe it in the open window the main character frampton nuttel goes to visit the saptern house he is seeking a cure for his nerves and call on the lady of the house to discuss this matter with her the story revolves around mrs saptern who le- leaves the window open for her husband and brother who she believes to be coming home any moment from a hunting trip while outside of her delusion the men were all killed in a shooting accident 3 years before frampton nuttel suffers from a nervous condition and has come to spend some time alone his sister sets up introductions for him with a few members of the community his first visit is to sapton house where he meets 15 year old vera the niece of mrs sapton vera keeps nuttel company while he waits Upon hearing that Nuttall has not made the Sapleton, Vera tells Nuttall some information about the family. Vera says that they three years ago to the date, Mrs. Sapleton, husband, and two younger brothers went on a went on a hunting trip and never returned. Vera goes into detail about the clothes they were wearing, the dog that accompanied them, and the song that Mrs. Sapleton brothers sang upon their return. Vera says that her grief-stricken aunt watches out the window expecting their return. When Mrs. Sapleton enters, she tells Nuttall that she expects her husband and brothers to return at any moment. Nuttall listens thinking that Mrs. Sapleton has in fact gone crazy. Suddenly Mrs. Sapleton brightens as she tells Nuttall that they have returned. 
Natal turns only to see the dead hunters. He becomes frightened and leaves in a rush. Mrs. Sapleton doesn't understand Natal's strange behavior, but Vera replies that he is deathly afraid of dogs. Not until the end of the story does the reader realize that Vera has tricked Mr. Natal. This is revealed with the last line of the story. Romance at short notice was her Vera's specialty. Uh, there are many characters in this story. The main character is Frampton Nuttell. He suffers from nervous problem and loves talking about his illness. He is also very timid and easily deceived as we see from how readily he believes Vera's story. Vera is the other main character. She is clever, quick-witted, very inventive and has a cruel, ironical sense of humor. She enjoys a terrifying Frampton whose doctors have warned him not to get into frightening situations. She is also a good actress. She manages to make Frampton believe that she is also terrified of the ghost. For instance, her art of narration sounds credible. She narrates the story of her uncle's death in a very convincing manner. It is punctuated with grief and sympathy. Mr. Nuttall and the reader do not doubt the credibility of Vera. The surprising end of the story puts everyone to horror. And the reader is surprised. Mr. Frampton feels uneasy when Mrs. Sapleton appears and he bolts the door. It is known to the reader that Vera has told a lie and she has invented the story to suit the situation. This is revealed with the last line of the story, romance at short story, notice was her specialty. So it is rightly said that romance at a short notice was her specialty. Mrs. Sapleton is kind, polite, but quite absorbed in her own concern. She isn't very interested in our visitor, but tries to be kind to him. We can guess that she is also full. Uh, number of important themes, including the difference between appearance and reality. It is no surprise that Mrs. Sapleton needs tells a story that is easy to believe. She begins with an object in plain view, an open window, and proceeds from there. The window is obviously open, but as for why it is open, the reader is completely at the mercy of Mrs. Sapleton's explanation, at least while she tells the story. When Mr. Nuttall and the reader are presented with a contrary reality at the end of the story, the result is a tension between appearance and reality that needs to be resolved. Deception provides another key theme in the story. The action and irony of the story revolves around the apparent deception practiced by Mrs. Sapleton Nees. It remains to be seen, however, whether this description is harmless, prank or the result of sinister, disturbing nature. If the Nees deception is cruel, then the reader must question the motives behind the deception practiced by all tellers of stories, including Saki himself. Mr. Nuttall's susceptibility or weakness to be deceived is no different from that of the reader of the story. Yet Mr. Nuttall is insane and the reader presumably is not. To maintain this distinction, Saki forces his reader to consider the nature of insanity and its causes. The first literary device that can be found in this short story is symbolism. The symbol in the open window is the open window itself and Mrs. Sapleton is tells Mr. Nuttall the story of the lost hunters. The open window comes to symbolize Mrs. Sapleton's anguish and heartbreak at the loss of her husband and younger brother. When the truth is later revealed, the open window no longer symbolizes anguish but the very deceit itself. Saki uses the symbol ironically by having the open window. The next literary device is irony. Mr. Nuttall first comes to Mrs. Sapleton's house to find peace or to find a cure for him. However, instead of finding a cure, his condition got worse when he was deceived by Vera that her aunt is grieving over her dead husband and younger brother, that she still leaves the window open so that they may walk back through it. Mrs. Sapleton then arrives, introduces him herself and tells Mr. Nuttall that she is waiting for her husband and brother. Mr. Nuttall looks through the window and comes to find that there are three men walking towards the window, looking exactly how the niece described them. A voice from one of the men yells out to Mrs. Sapleton and Mr. Nuttall rushes out of the house. The final literary device is personification. It is defined as a representation of non-limit things as objects, 
which have human attributes or qualities. The personification in this short story is found in the phrase, a treacherous piece of bog. A bog is defined as a soft, wet ground and in this short story, the bog is called as treacherous because it is where Mrs. Sapleton, husband and brothers were missing and can never be found as it has engulfed them. The lesson that we can learn in this, uh, in this short story is we must check the validity of a story before we trust it completely. Even the person who tells us about the story itself is a teenager like Vera, Vera, but we cannot assume that they will tell us the truth. Maybe their body is small and younger than us, but who knows what they have in mind. So no matter wherever we are and whoever the person or society that we lived in, we must ensure the truth of the story before we believe them and make our own opinion about this story. Thank you very much.